All right, so we're going to look at uh, the first derivative test today. Um, the first derivative test is uh, it's a way of finding out whether a point is a minimum or maximum. It's also a way of telling uh, some, some other information about the function that we'll see. So um, let's put that in as part of our definition. It's a way to determine if a critical point So here's the uh, sort of process that we're going to uh, follow to do this first derivative test. So exactly like you did last day, you're going to locate critical numbers. And um, we're going to use those critical numbers to make a number line. Okay. Then um, we'll test a point inside the interval so we can figure out whether it's positive or negative. That's what we want to know. So usually for this part, we're going to use a calculator. And I recommend that you use the table part of your TI-83. That one is most useful. Okay. So now we want to talk a little bit about what we know if we're talking about positive and negative derivatives. So tell me something. What is a derivative? A slope. A slope? Okay. What else is a derivative? So tangent, slope of a tangent line, that's a bit more specific, but what else? Did we, I said there was another important thing you always had to remember. It's also a rate of change. So if we had a positive derivative, then what do you think, uh, could we say anything about the function if the derivative was positive? It's going up. Yeah, it's going up. It's increasing because the rate of change is positive. Okay, um, if it was to change from positive then to negative, could you tell me anything about that critical point? Yeah, because if it's going to be from increasing to decreasing, then it has to look like that. So we'd be talking about a maximum if that was the case. Okay. If the sign was to change in the other direction from negative to positive, then we'd be talking about something that looked like, I don't know, like this. So here's, um, it's decreasing, and then it starts to increase on this side. So there's got to be um, a minimum in the middle there. Okay, so that makes sort of the valley. So we'll try it and illustrate this with a polynomial. So nice and simple to get going. So the first thing we've got to do is find critical points. That requires a derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of this function here. So um, let's see here. OK, so. Um, that derivative would be 3x squared minus 3x. Um, and like you're probably used to now, it's probably better that we think about this as 3x times x minus 1. And we can get some critical points there fairly quick. No, I forgot. There's no worries about this being undefined because it's a polynomial, so it's going to be defined everywhere. Only problem could be, uh, or sorry, not problem, but the only place we'd look for critical points is 0 and 1. Now, um, so, so far we've done this. Um, we need to create these intervals I'm talking about to know whether it's positive or negative. So to do that, we're going to think about it like this. Here's the point 0, here's the point 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test a value inside each of these intervals. So, for example, maybe in this one I'll pick negative 1. Okay, maybe inside here I'll pick a half. And maybe inside here I'll pick 5. Just want to pick a number to figure out whether the derivative here is positive or negative. Okay, so I'll give you just a minute to work that out. Again, I recommend you use the table method because you can quickly get some numbers from the table. So, can somebody give me... Uh, whether it's positive or negative in these intervals. Okay, let me just, uh, my eraser went a little crazy here. So it's negative in the first. Okay. Um, what about in the middle? Negative. The middle piece is negative? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the last one? Positive. Positive. Okay. Um, hmm. Can we check that again, that first interval? Can you do the original line all the 
Um, I'm looking at the derivative. I want to uh, know if the derivative. So we got to make some adjustments there. Okay. So what's this? Was the first one correct? Positive. Okay. So if I wasn't clear, um, we are looking for the derivative because we want to know if it's increasing or whether it's decreasing. So. Second interval will be? Okay, and then the third? Positive. Okay, that sounds right this time. So what we can conclude then is if I was increasing until I hit zero, and then I stopped increasing, this must be the maximum. Couldn't go any higher because I start to decrease right after it. Okay. Same thing, if I'm decreasing, here I stop decreasing, and I start to increase. So then this must be a minimum. And again, I'm increasing in this interval, decreasing in this one, and increasing here where the derivative is positive. So while you're jotting your notes in, um, I've got the, show you the picture just so we can verify it. Okay, so there's the picture. Possibly I'll zoom in a bit here. Okay, so there was the point we found at zero, and as you can see, that in fact is a maximum, just like we predicted, and over here at one, it's a minimum, just like we predicted. Okay. So I'm going to let you try the next one on your own. See if you can tell me what the uh, critical points are. Are they minimums? Are they maximums? I would also like you to tell me where this graph is increasing and decreasing. OK, let's take a look and see where we're at. So if we had a derivative here, um, the derivative should look like um, 1 half minus cosine x, and I'm looking for where this equals to zero to get my critical points. Nowhere that the cosine is undefined, so I'm going to try and solve it for where the uh, tangent line is horizontal. That means um, 1 half minus cos x equals to zero, so cos x must equal 1 half. This is the triangle that we're uh, talking about, which means this is the angle for the cosine, and that gives me a reference angle of pi over 3, or 60 degrees. Then if we think about where would a positive cosine be, that means there's a couple candidates. There's one here and one here. That would be the pi over 3, and that would be the 5 pi over 3. OK, so now I have my critical points. I need a number line so that I can start looking for where this is increasing or decreasing. Um, and in fact, this is a very specific interval because, of course, we know cosine is going to repeat that over and over and over and over again. So that means there's many, many, many critical points. We'll see it when we look at the graph. But we're only interested from 0 to 2 pi. So that's all I'm going to put on, this, on the, the number line is 0 to 2 pi. So that means pi over 3 is going to be somewhere in here. And 5 pi over 3, something like that. So. What do we get for the signs? Positives or negatives? Negative, positive, negative. OK. Negative, positive, negative? Is that, uh, yeah? I'm trusting. Anybody verify that? <laughs> OK. Well, we'll verify it in the picture in just a minute to make sure that we've done this properly. Um, so let's take a look here. If this is decreasing, then it hits pi over 3, starts to increase. Um, this one's a minimum. Then increasing, the very highest I'm going to get is here before I start to decrease again. So, um, whoops, I've got them backwards there. So this, sorry, would be decreasing. And then on this interval, it would be increasing. And in this one here, it would be decreasing. So as long as we've not made any... Uh, calculator type of errors. Let's check and see what we have for the graph. 1 half x minus sine of x. Okay, and we are looking from 0 to 2 pi. So let's go from negative pi to 3 pi. OK, so here is the, um, the first critical point that I was interested in, right here at pi over 3. Uh, where the crosshairs is, it's hard to see, but 
that is a minimum. Is that what we predicted? Yeah, okay, so so far we're, we're doing pretty good. And then the next one was at five pi over three, which is gonna be right up here. And again, that one is a maximum. So if we look at what we predicted, we're okay. Okay, so that's all, that's all worked out great. Okay, so the last one, um, the, 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 I shouldn't say the last one, but the last one I'll have you try on your own. The next one I'm gonna give you a hand with, but uh, let's try this next one here. Okay, so let's uh, no. take a derivative here. So I'll be 2 thirds x squared minus 4, and then I'll be negative 1 third. And don't forget your chain rule because there is an inside derivative there. If I wanted to write this a little bit more uh, as what you're used to, it would look a little bit like this. Something similar, I would assume. You'd have something like that, I think. So, um, if we're looking for critical points, um, this one's not too bad. There's going to be, when x equals 0, that's going to give me some critical points. I'm also going to have some critical points um, down here, because I'll divide by 0 if I use plus or minus 2. So that means I have a number line that'll look like this. And I've got negative 2, 0, and 2. So remember, it's the derivative that we're interested in knowing the sign of it. Is it positive or negative? So that we can tell if it's increasing or decreasing. So now that we have our critical points, we have a number line. Let's find out where it's positive and negative. So what did you end up with for uh, your positives and negatives? First interval and positive. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm just going to tell you it's worked out nicely for us. It is never guaranteed to go positive, negative, positive, negative. It's possible that it goes negative and negative, um, or positive and positive, you do have to check. I wouldn't shortcut it. If you're using the table method, it does not take you very long to do this, so don't skip this and just think it's going to be skip this. Um, negative, positive, negative, positive, and always alternate. So if we label our points here, uh, we should have a minimum. Uh, we should have a maximum, and then we should have a minimum. It's going to be decreasing, increasing, decreasing, and increasing. And just so that we uh, kind of have a chance to see it before you get to your homework, if this were in the textbook, it wouldn't do it like on a number line. It would have gone like this and said this increasing on the interval from negative 2 to 0. So that's this piece in here. And it's also increasing from 2 to infinity. And it would say decreasing from um, negative infinity to negative 2, and um, decreasing from 0 to 2. So that's most likely the notation that you're going to encounter when you look on your um, homework, or as well as if this were in a test. Uh, for some reason, they don't like number lines. I like number lines. I don't, don't know why they don't like number lines. But that's the, that's the standard calculus notation for intervals. So um, the last question I'm going to try to walk you through a little bit here. It's actually a pretty simple one as long as you have a bit of a setup to it. So um, yeah, we're going to take a look at a projectile like a cannon. Okay. So here's a uh, this is an actual physics formula, but you know if we come up with this physics formula here for a projectile. We might be interested in asking ourselves something like, how far can we shoot this thing? Has anybody seen the annual pumpkin uh, cannon? <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I, apparently it's nuts. Like, these guys fire pumpkins, like, up to a mile out of their cannons. They have this giant, I mean, it's got to be somewhere in the middle of nowhere where they have nothing better to do with their free time, right? <laughs> but it's still pretty impressive how far they fire these, these pumpkins. You can Google it later. But, you know, if, if you were on that team and you were trying to figure out how far can we shoot this pumpkin, I mean, obviously you'd want to make everything as optimal as possible. So if all we're interested in is how do we maximize the angle, there's a couple of things we're going to treat as constants. Okay, 
Okay, so first of all, I mean, gravity, well, we're going to treat gravity as a constant for some obvious reasons, but we're only looking at the angle as being our variable. We're saying all other things being equal, how does the angle affect this problem? So we could take our cannon to the moon, and we would still have a different gravity, but we'd still have the maximum angle on the moon. So we can treat gravity as a constant. Same thing with this initial velocity, how fast that um, projectile is fired out of the cannon. We can treat that also as a constant because, I mean, obviously if it fires faster out of the cannon, it's going to go farther. But uh, the point is, if we find out that it's 30 degrees, then no matter what the initial velocity is, 30 degrees will shoot it the farthest. Okay? So, um, this information is handy because then when we want to take the derivative, if we treated them like constants, it would be just some number squared um, divided by whatever our gravity is. And the derivative for sine, that's going to be cosine 2 theta and chain rule says times 2. So 2 initial velocity squared over gravity and cosine 2 theta. So if we look at this derivative that we have, and we're trying to ask ourselves, how do we make this 0? It looks kind of complicated because there's a few variables. But remember, we're treating gravity and the initial vo velocity like a constant. So there's actually only one place, only one way that we're going to make this equal to 0. Theta 0. Uh, well, you're super close, but you're talking about this whole thing, right? Yeah. yeah, well, if there's no initial velocity out of the cannon, then it's not going to go anywhere, right? So you're correct, but um, cosine 2 theta is what we're actually... We'd like to figure out how do we make this equal to 0. So if we can figure out where does this equal to 0. Yeah, so let's take a look at our choices. So I'm going to do it this way with the graph. Normally, this would hit it at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. I'm going to take you all the way back to math 12, though, and say that there is a horizontal stretch factor of 1 half. So that means pi over 2 will become pi over 4, and 3 pi over 2 will become 3 pi over 4. Okay. So that's some possibilities that we have for our critical points here. Now... It's nice sometimes to do things on paper and do all the symbolic calculus and stuff and have no idea what we're talking about. But we have to reject one of those angles. Any guesses? Sure. The second one? Okay, the second one is the bad angle. You're a really bad soldier if you march your cannon out on the field and your enemies are that way straight in front of you and you decide that you're going to point your cannon at 3 pi over 2. <laughs> right? Your cannon is then going to be very counterproductive to your uh, efforts. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, let's get rid of this. That's not one of the possibilities. Okay? Unless the people in the tanks really love them. Yes. Okay, fine. If we wanted to go backwards. I, anyways, we'll keep, we'll keep it as simple as possible. And really, what angles are we interested in here? Like, if we're thinking about firing this cannon in one, you know, general direction, what are we going to sort of limit our search to? Zero to 90. Zero to 90, right? So for us in calculus, that would be zero to, to pi over 2. So this is about what our interval needs to look like, and it's pi over 4 here. So let's figure it out. Is this one of the ones we should choose? Because um, remember, it could be an endpoint as well. Common sense should tell you it's not an endpoint, <laughs> right? Um, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit here for you. Um, if we were to check on these, we would in fact have a positive um, to the left and a negative to the right. So we can verify that this is, from 0 to pi over 2, this is the local maximum. So um, we not only um, verify, we can prove that if you're going to fire a projectile, the best angle is pi over 4, four or 45 degrees. Everything else is equal. You want to have your cannon at 45 degrees. Now, whatever you plan to do this weekend, I am not responsible for it <laughs> if it involves anything to do with this problem in real life, okay? Is it always pi over 4? Um, as far as I know, unless we want to start adding some tricky stuff like wind and all that other kind of extra stuff. 